Chuck, here's a topic I don't think we talk enough about. Dimensions. Dementia, huh? No, no. <laughs> you may have heard that we live in three dimensions and time is a fourth dimension. Okay. And evidence that it really matters is even if you don't know it explicitly, you know it implicitly that time really matters. Because I can say to you, Chuck, I'll meet you tomorrow at Starbucks. Right. And what's your reply to me? I'll be there all day waiting, man, because I got <laughs> nothing to do. I got nothing to do. So I'll just be at Starbucks. I'll start off in the morning with some breakfast, maybe a little muffin. And then I'll just stay there until you get there. Okay, sorry. I'll meet you at Starbucks at 12 noon. Okay. Oh, thanks. Thanks. I thanks. <laughs> yeah. appreciate that. I gave you a location in space, and you had to wait until I gave you a location in time. In time. Right. And that intersection of space and time is called your world line. Whoa, love it. It's called a world line. World line. So for our world lines to intersect, we have to be at the same place at the same time. See, now, fellas, if you're smart and you're single, you will hold this one in the back, put it away in your back pocket. Okay. <laughs> Girl, I just need you as a part of my world line. You know ah! <laughs> This is rap, rap lines from, exactly. from relativity. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> and let's reverse that. I'll say, oh, Chuck, I'll meet you tomorrow at noon. North America, good for you. Right, right. Thank you, Earth. Yeah. Earth. <laughs> is that all right? <laughs> yeah. So we know intuitively you need both the time and the space coordinates conjoined in order to actually meet. Absurd variance on that would be you cross the street and 10 minutes later, a truck barrels through in that same location. Right. So you were in the same location as the truck, but not at the same time. You wouldn't say, oh, man, I almost died today. You wouldn't because your world lines missed each other. Right. And you can do that another way. You exist at the same time as the truck, but you know we're near each other in location. Right. So what made Zoom and other video conferencing so useful during COVID is that you only had to be at the same time. Right. You didn't have to be at the same place. So you take away one of the components of the world lines, right? and then many more people can participate. But you are converging at the same place virtually or digitally. So. Uh, okay, well, your image is on, I mean, I have my image of you on my computer, but it's not you. This is true. So let's keep talking about dimensions, ready? So we have one dimension, which is just a line. The measure of the line is the length. Okay. There's no other measurement you can right. make of it that has any meaning. Right. right. It does not have a width. Now you can add another dimension. That, let's call that X. We add a Y. Mm -hmm. And now you have a surface. A plane. A plane. And that it's two dimensions, X and Y. Okay? So you can make a square out of that couldn't you? Yeah. Two dimensional beings who live in that surface to everyone else in that surface, they only have an outer perimeter. Right. You can't see inside their bodies. They're all inside the flat plane. They're, they're inside the That's flat all plane. all they can see. All you see is the edge of them. Right, the edge. So medical surgery in a two dimensional universe, they'd have to cut you open part you and then reach in and do what they need to come out and then stitch you up again okay right if we live in three dimensions you get to look down on that flat world and see all the inner guts of every living creature in that universe mm -hmm. because there is no boundary above and below it's only within the plane itself you can see the heart beating you can see the spleen the liver the pancreas the lungs you can see it all in fact if you wanted to be a surgeon for that world you could go in cut out the appendix if they needed appendectomy and never have to cut through their outer boundary mm. you'd be like magically going into their body dimensional surgery Dimensional surgery. They would have no access or even awareness that that was even possible. But you do. Right. And you can go in and rectify that. So now, 
we are in three dimensions. We reveal our skin in all directions to the other people. Right. So our skin is the boundary between our innards and a medical doctor. If they want to get inside you, they got to cut you open. Right. A four-dimensional creature can just look inside our bodies. Oh, I feel violated. I know. <laughs> oh. I hope no one's watching right now. <laughs> God. Anyone from the fourth spatial dimension has full access to your entire body's innards. Oh. They could pull stuff out, put stuff in, operate, whatever. We are the game operation to anybody in the fourth dimension. <laughs> What I'm saying is, if you had what you beautifully refer to as dimensional surgery, you would be able to operate without ever cutting someone open, provided you come from a higher dimension inward. Right. And it is completely analogous to be a four-dimensional surgeon operating on us without cutting us open, to be we as three-dimensional surgeons operating on two-dimensional creatures, because you could just see all their organs just sitting there. Now. We can move forward and back, left and right, up and down. Okay? Those are the three spatial dimensions. But the time dimension, you don't have access to the past or the future. We are prisoners of the present, forever transitioning between our inaccessible past and our unknowable future. But let's think this through. How would you imprison a two-dimensional creature? Draw a line. What kind of line? A square. A square. Just draw a square. That's its prison cell. Yeah. But we say, wait, just step up out of it, and then you escape. Good to go. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm fully locked in. Fully locked in. How do we put us in a cell? We have six walls. Right. A ceiling floor, four walls around us. Right. We think we are completely contained within it. A higher dimensional creature says, just step out and then step back in and you're outside the cell. We said, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. Wait a minute. I said a four dimensional creature. If, if we had access to the fourth dimension, which for us is what? Time. Time. But wait, we're prisoners of time. So suppose we weren't prisoners of time. Suppose you could move through time the way we move through space. Could you then escape the prison? Yeah, just move to a time when I'm not in prison. Exactly! <laughs> <laughs> just say, let me get out of these six walls here. You just go back to a time before you got put into prison or go to the future where you were let go from the prison. Right. Each of those counts as escaping the prison without ever breaking down the wall. Right. So time can serve that same role if you had access to the past and to the future. That's pretty cool, man. Of course, we go higher this fifth dimension, six dimensions, this sort of thing. And uh, mathematically, you can calculate what all the properties are. And it's fascinating to watch. Uh, another quick one. You ready? Go ahead. Knots in strings only exist in three dimensions. Okay. In other words, in a fourth dimension, you hand them a knot in the fourth dimension and say, wait, just just pull the ends That's right. and it unravels itself. That's the same thing as we three-dimensional people looking at two-dimensional people and they have a string that just has this loop in it. One loop. Right. And they say, how do I untie this? I can't untie. They say, dude, pick up the two ends and stretch. They can't do that. Right. They can't do that. So knots are different things in higher dimensions. The way to do it is you have to make a knot out of a two-dimensional ribbon. And there are ways to do that, I think, and rather than just out of a string. So a lot of interesting things change and are mind-boggling for ascending to a higher dimension. Sweet. Uh, one last quick thing. Mm -hmm. Why does anyone want a flying car? So you can get up and over traffic. So you only really think about flying cars in cities where you're like plugged with traffic. And what a flying car gets you is another dimension of travel. True. You're no longer stuck in a one lane road because that's bad, all right? But even if you go two dimensions and you have multiple lanes, because now you're in a plane, that can get cloggy too. Right. So get a third dimension is wide open. But wait a minute, that means we already have flying cars. It's called the subway. Ooh. Instead of being in the air, it's underground. 
bypassing the traffic you're in. It still invoked the third dimension. Mm. But also, it means overpasses, where the freeway goes right through and the overpass goes over. That's a flying car right there. You invoked another dimension. You have a very low bar for what's called flying car. <laughs> I'm just saying. So I think that's all the time we have. And in another dimension, we would have all the time in the world. All right. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, as always. Keep looking up. <laughs>